Tivoli Storage Manager for Virtual Environments 7.1. In this demonstration, I show how the VMware Administrator can use the Data Protection for VMware plugin interface within the vSphere client to protect and recover virtual machines. One significant item to note is that while the virtual machines are being backed up to a Tivoli Storage Manager server, the VMware Administrator can perform backup and recovery operations with only minimal knowledge of TSM. For this demonstration, the data protection for VMware Suite has already been installed and configured, and I'm ready to begin. First, I'll launch the vSphere client and log into the vCenter server. Now I'll select the Hosts and Clusters view and briefly explore the demonstration environment. Here you can see that we have a data center called Enablement, a cluster named CSI, and two ESX hosts, and finally the virtual machines that I'll be using for this demonstration. Now I'm ready to launch the Tivoli Data Protection for VMware plugin interface. First, I'll click the Home icon, and in the Solutions and Applications panel, I'll launch the plugin. To begin, I'll click Define a Backup Task. This will launch the wizard that will guide me through the steps to perform a backup. On the Welcome page, I'll click Next and Continue. Then I'll give the schedule a name. And here on the source page, you can see that by default, any newly added VMs are included in the backup task. Now I'll take a minute to demonstrate the selection methods that are available. If I select the cluster, the backup task includes all the VMs on all the hosts in that cluster. Or I can select a specific host and the backup task will include all the VMs on that host. But for this demonstration, I'll just select two individual virtual machines. Then on the destination page, I'll accept the default data mover node and now on the schedule page, I could choose to define a schedule for periodic backups, but again, for this demonstration, I'll just choose run backup now. And for backup strategy, I have two options, incremental forever, which creates a single initial full backup followed by an ongoing sequence of incremental backups or a periodic full strategy. I'll select incremental forever for this demo. Now I select the full backup type. And here I'll point out that if I had selected incremental, the system would do a full backup anyway if this was the first time. I can review the details on the summary page and when I click finish, the backup operation will begin immediately. Now I click the reports menu item to monitor the progress of the backup task. I could define a refresh interval for this table, but the lowest value is 30 seconds. So for the demo, I'll just refresh the report manually. And now I see the task has completed successfully. I can select the task and scroll down to view the task details as well. So defining and performing backup operations is easy. And next I'll demonstrate two different recovery scenarios. First I'll return to the hosts and clusters view and delete the WinXP Red virtual machine to simulate a disaster. And then I'll go back to the data protection for VMware plugin, where I'll select the restore menu. By expanding the data center structure you see here, the available restore points are revealed. And I probably should have verified the restore points before I deleted that virtual machine, so I'm happy to see that WinXP Red is here, and I'll select it. I can scroll down and review the restore point details if I want to do that. And when I'm ready to start the task, I simply click restore to launch the wizard.
On the welcome page, I can use the hyperlink that you see here to review the requirements for restore operations, but I'll just continue. I review the source information, and then I need to select the restore type. For this first scenario, we want to recover from our simulated disaster and just restore things to the way they were before, so I'll select the full VM restore operation. I'll describe the other two options when I demonstrate the next scenario. I'll choose restore to original location because again, we want everything back like it was. And I'll also take all the default values here. Then I can review the summary information and click finish to start the task. I can click okay in this window to monitor the task. And just as with the backup task earlier, I'll manually refresh the table to observe the progress. Uh, and I see that it has completed successfully. With restore task selected, I can scroll down and view additional details about the task. Now I'll return to the hosts and clusters view of the data center. And I can see that the Win XP Red virtual machine was indeed restored to its original location. And with the virtual machine selected, I can select the summary tab and view the details for this VM. Once again, I'll return to the plugin interface and perform the final recovery scenario for this demonstration. I'll select the restore menu item again, and we see that the restore point from the previous task is still selected. I'll clear that one and select Win XP Green instead. and I'll click Restore to launch the wizard. On the Welcome page, I click Next, and on the Source page, I click Next, and here I'll take a minute to explain a bit more about the available types of restore operations. The restore point represents all the blocks of data that were copied to the Tivoli Storage Manager repository by the backup operation to create the point-in-time snapshot. In the previous scenario, I selected the full VM restore type and recovered the VM to its original location, the same data center, the same ESX host, and the same data store. But note that I could have chosen alternate destinations if I needed to do that. So the full VM restore copies all the blocks of data from the Tivoli Storage Manager server back to the vCenter data store. And this operation completed fairly quickly here in this demo environment because the virtual machines are really quite small. They're only about two gigabytes. Now, in a production environment, the full VM restore operation could take several hours or even a few days, depending on the size of the VM and the system resources. So that's why we have the second option that you see here, the full VM instant restore type. The instant restore is going to copy all of the data blocks from the TSM server back to the vCenter data store, but we don't have to wait for the operation to complete. Once the virtual machine is mounted, we can put it back into service right away while the recovery continues in the background. The third restore type, and this is the one I will demonstrate, is the full VM instant access operation. This is similar to the instant restore, but this operation uses the Tivoli Storage Manager repository as a vCenter data store and mounts the virtual machine directly from there. Okay, so I'm ready to continue, so I'll select the full VM instant access type, and I'll also make the selection to automatically power on the VM. I'm going to restore to an alternate location this time, and I need to supply a unique name for the VM and accept all the other default values. Again, I review the summary information and click finish to start the operation. I don't need to wait for the task to complete this time. As soon as I see that the VM is mounted and powered on, I can return to the hosts and clusters view, select the green validation VM, and use the console tab to log in. So the instant restore operation gives us full access to the virtual machine in read write mode, and we can use our routine validation tools to verify the integrity of the backup without needing to restore the VM back to the data store. 
it's important to note that any new or changed data will be discarded when the VM is unmounted by the cleanup process that I'll demonstrate next. So now that I'm satisfied that the virtual machine is working as expected, I need to return to the plugin interface and do a little housekeeping. The recent tasks table indicates that the instant access task was a success, which we knew anyway, so I'll click the restore menu item. And on the restore points page, I'll click the instant access restore status tab. And once I select the data center and data mover node, the table is refreshed. And under the action needed column, I see that this VM needs to be dismounted. I just select the VM and click dismount to start the task. And I can monitor the progress of the cleanup operation just as I did with all of the other tasks. And now the last thing that I'll do in this demonstration is return to the hosts and clusters view and just verify that the instant access VM is gone. So what I've demonstrated here is how the VMware administrator can use the data protection for VMware plugin interface within the vSphere client to protect and recover virtual machines. And as you've seen, even though the virtual machines are being backed up to a Tivoli storage manager server, the VMware administrator can perform backup and recovery operations with only minimal knowledge of TSM.